Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Would like to entertain nomination for assistant chair. Do I have a nomination? Yes, you do, Mr. Chair. I'm going to nominate uh, Cheryl Charles, although she can't be here tonight. Uh, she's been a regular contributor to these sessions, and I think an effective one. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. I have that. a second from Lynn Morgan. Are there additional nominations? All right, I'm hearing no additional nominations. Um, I'm going to ask that uh, someone move that nominations um, be closed and um, direct the chair to cast one ballot for um, Cheryl Charles as assistant chair. So, not, move. so move from you, Lynn? Okay, got it. Um, all right, uh, Cheryl Charles is the assistant chair. Um, give me just a moment to catch my notes up here. Um, election of a clerk. Do we have a nomination for clerk? Mr. Chair. Yes, I, Mr. Breyer. I would like to nominate Priscilla Lambert for that position. All right, we have a nomination for Priscilla Lambert uh, as clerk. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Lynn. Okay. Uh, are there additional uh, nominations for clerk? All right, hearing none, I would like to entertain a uh, motion to close uh, nominations and uh, direct the chair to cast one ballot for Priscilla Lambert as clerk. So moved. Okay, Jessa has the motion and George has the second. Um, congratulations, Priscilla, you are uh, the clerk of the WNESU board. And Thank you for taking on the responsibility. Yeah, we didn't ask her if she wanted it. I, I, um, do you want it? Do you want she it? She muted and we might want to leave it that way. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Priscilla. Um, an election for assistant treasurer. And uh, Chris, who uh, currently holds that position? Do you know? Um, yeah, I can tell you in one second. Mr. Chair? Yes, Jack. You set that position up because at the time our, uh, our treasurer was not able to be there on a consistent basis, so we created the position uh, for that, and I think I was the holder of that position, but that was because the former chair of uh, the Rockingham board uh, occasionally had duties that made it impossible to serve as treasurer. I don't know if it's a requirement to have one. It used to be mostly because we had some checks that needed to be directly signed. Uh, but I think that uh, we have a, we do have a chair of the district and that should be sufficient. Uh, Jack, would you mind explaining the concept of chair of the district? Because I believe I know what you're speaking about, but it would be useful. Excuse me, the treasurer of the oh. district. Uh, the, 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 the district uh, has, a, has a treasurer that is the uh, designated signatory, but there were times, particularly around payroll, that it was considered more useful to have a member of this board, which this board can do, uh, designate somebody as a as a board treasurer, uh, just simply for things like getting called in to sign last minute payroll checks back when we were having lots of interesting things happening with payroll checks. But I think that's not a thing anymore. But if Mr. Pratt thinks we need one, you know, that's a different matter. Superintendent Pratt is queried. I think the way things are set up now, it's a similar question that the high school board asked in regards to assistant treasurer and they did, they elected not to have one. If they said if they needed one, they could go back and vote one in. But I, it's my understanding that with everything um, being on hand 
doc now and stuff, we're able to get signatures a lot easier. So assistant clerk is not as a necessity as it was before. So I would say that that's up to the board. You can always go back and elect, elect an assistant clerk if you feel that um, things aren't being done in a, in a timely manner. But um, like I said, the high school has not and a few other boards have. So it's, it's up to you. Um, unless there is an objection, I'm going to, oh, go ahead, Priscilla. Uh, who, who is, the, is Kathleen Peck is our treasurer as well? I know she does for Rockingham. And there was some confusion and, and that's why we said we would have a backup, but probably never use them at the Rockingham one um, because um, apparently Flora was having Westminster sign some of ours, which is a problem. So, but Kathleen is for Rockingham, who is for the WNESU. Is that Kathleen? Just had an election. What do we, 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 we won the seat? Kathleen. Well, then there you go. Okay, I think we've settled the question of assistant chair. I'm going to suggest that we can pass over um, item E, which is appoint voting members to the WNEA. David, board. if we just assign somebody, then we would have the backup and they might never get used. But okay, we would I'm, going to, I'm going to uh, consider uh, your request germane here, um, Priscilla. And would you like to make a motion on that? Yeah, I think we should just assign somebody as a backup just in case. So, yes, a motion to assign. Uh, at least have a name in there in case we needed one. Would you like to name a name? Uh, Jack Breyer has uh, served in that role in the past, Priscilla. Jack, Jack would be great. Well, uh, would you be Would you be willing, Jack? I'm nominating Jack. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, any other nominations? All right, then. Um, I'm going to. Did you need a uh, point of order? Did you need a second? Oh, thank you for pointing that out, Deb. Are you offering that second? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you, Deb. Um, so we have um, uh, a, a motion with a second to um, appoint Jack Breyer as assistant chair. Are there any other nominations? Assistant treasurer. Assistant treasurer. Thank you, um, Jessa. That's what I was talking about before, about keeping me on the tracks here. Um, I'm going to uh, declare um, nominations be closed and direct the clerk to cast one ballot for Jack Breyer as assistant treasurer. Thank you. Okay, we will pass over uh, item E, which is appoint voting members to the WNESU board. <laughs> so that's a local, local matter. Um, uh, Chris, to the best of my knowledge, the WNESU is only responsible um, for the pre-K functions, do we need to appoint a truant officer? Correct, you can skip over truant officer. Okay, then we will. Um, appoint reps to the uh, tech centers and advisory councils. That's a motion which I think is only germane to the high school, so we will pass okay. over uh, item G. Uh, item H is appoint uh, warrant signers. And what I'm gonna actually ask is if there are volunteers who are willing to do this. Deb, I know you have in the past, would you be interested in continuing to serve? I'm still happy to serve, yes. Okay, and um, is there any other uh, member of the WNESU board who would like to be a regular warrant signer? I know that you, uh, Jason, have expressed interest in this uh, responsibility in the past. It's, is it something you would be willing to do? They arrive electronically, so they're pretty, pretty easy to handle. Uh, either way, <clears throat> excuse me, either way, I, I see them and if I have questions, I usually ask and people are uh, very good about uh, answering. So um, I'm fluid, whatever, whatever okay. the board is desired. Then it would be the chair's preference to appoint uh, Deb Wright and Jason Terry as warrant signers. Um, uh, unless there's any objection, they are appointed. Um, Set time, date, and location of regular meetings. Um, the WNESU board has held its regular meetings on the fourth Wednesday of the month at 6.30. Uh, the location 
currently is Zoom, but I think we all have hopes that we might actually be able to sit down at the table together again. So uh, for the time being, yes, Jack. Uh, just one question, and um, I'm not sure who I can ask this of. Uh, maybe Molly would know, how frequently does the, uh, uh, does the uh, Westminster Board uh, have meetings on Wednesdays? I, I, I just see that as one of those conflicts. I, I really would like us to try to avoid having meetings on nights that our uh, constituent town select boards meet. Um, maybe we're stuck with it. But I do. Con I, I'm noted, noting um, noting um, uh, Cheryl's absence tonight, and I'd hate to have it be a, a regular issue because of the business with the Westminster withdrawal. Well, Molly, if you're here, you're queried. Maybe you know David. I, I guess, uh, you know. I, I don't, and I'm going to suggest that we can revisit that. Um, again, maybe under director's comments, because Molly as a director certainly would be um, um, entitled to comment on that. Give her a minute to find out. So we can, yeah, and, okay. and if not, let's, find, let's see if we can get an answer for the next WNESU meeting, because if All necessary, right. we can see. A little bit I'm, I'm here now. Sorry, I was just oh, running in the Molly, door. did you get Jack's question? I did not. Molly, uh, the, I'm, I'm expressing the concern that given the amount of work that the, uh, that the uh, uh, Westminster Select Board may be doing involving education because of the, uh, the petition to separate. Uh, do you know what nights they meet? Because I'd, I'd hate to have a conflict. They are, they're the same Wednesday as, as this meeting is. Because oh. I used to try to get on to them, but you can't, you know, you can't be on to them. Well, I'm, I'm wondering if perhaps you and David might be able to help us identify. We can we can schedule for this next time uh, provisionally for Wednesday. But if we can find another night on the calendar that doesn't conflict with a town select board night, I would really, really like it a lot. I think it makes Cheryl's job very difficult. And frankly, it makes our board's job very difficult. Molly, my sense, oh, go ahead, Lynn. Can we change it to the second or fourth Wednesday? Is well, currently, we, we, currently we are doing the fourth. Oh, excuse me, the, uh, the third, third Wednesday. I'm not hearing any objection. Let's try the third Wednesday and see what happens. I, I, George, George. Might I um, suggest that we um, get a handle on, on when all of these uh, different towns meet before we make that decision and um, <clears throat> revisit next meeting. All right. Any objection to uh, taking uh, George Smith's uh, guidance and advice here? Uh, I like it. And that's what we will do. All right. Um, establish the Priscilla, new has your hand up. I'm sorry, David. Oh, I'm sorry, Priscilla. I missed you. Go ahead. David, uh, so is the next one for next month that we're going to be the third Wednesday? And then we'll discuss it. Or when when is the one for next month? Well, we actually, that one at least. You're, you're front running me here a little bit, Priscilla, <laughs> but it's very useful. I was actually going to suggest when we get to setting our next meeting that we set one um, for uh, the 14th of April. And the reason for this is that number one, it would uh, meet Jason Terry's timetable for um, at least reviewing WNESU hires. Um, we could act at that time if we decided to. And the other thing is quite frankly, I think we have a fair amount of business which is building up, which um, we should probably um, uh, take care of um, earlier. Certainly with the change in CDC guidelines in terms of classroom spacing, just to name one Priscilla, that will have some impacts on how we go back to school. And I think we're gonna to wanna to have some administrative guidance as to how we're gonna do that. So I will, when we get to setting uh, the time and date for next meeting, um, ask to set it on the 14th. And certainly by the 14th, we can know when the uh, select boards meet. Back to you, Priscilla. Thank you. Okay. All right then, um, 
establish the newspaper to be used to announce school board functions and activities. Uh, Chris, I believe we're using both the Reformer and the Eagle. Is that correct? If you know. Yes, currently, it is, yes, it is the Reformer and the Eagle. And some of the other boards have wanted to put it in some of the, the free papers that go out as well. So I just wanted to put that out there. So just to jump in real quick, David, uh, the Rockingham board uh, decided to add the shopper uh, to um, to the list. We we currently are doing the um, Brattleboro Reformer in the shopper at this point. Same in Grafton. It's the Reformer and the shopper in Grafton? Oh. Uh, no, the shopper, uh, I don't know where it goes out to. but No, the Jesso Grafton board Jesso went with the Grafton. same. Yeah, just so the Grafton board did the same thing. So. Chopper is based in, um, in in Chester, but it does cover the area, particularly uh, the local grocery store. What what would be the board's pleasure for uh, newspapers? Uh, Mr. Chair, I would yes, suggest sir. that the three are just fine. Uh, I, I have no objection to adding the chopper. How much does it cost to run the notices, Chris? He's looking it up. And he's going to turn out. There we go. Couldn't, couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell you offhand. I think some of them are some of them are by the line, so that uh, price could vary. Yeah. Um, if there are no objections, um, I'm going to uh, request that we use all three media. My roll call on this. Um, well, we can certainly roll call if you would like to. I was asking if there were uh, objections, but certainly let's roll call it. Uh, Deb Wright? Aye. Okay. Um, Jessa, West Clark? Uh, yes. Okay. Lynn Morgan? Yes. Uh, George Smith? Yes. Priscilla Lambert? Yes. Uh, Jason Terry? Yes. Uh, one, two, three. It looks like we have a unanimous decision that it will be uh, the Eagle, the Reformer, and the Shopper. Okay. Uh, committee assignments. We have buildings and grounds on here, Chris. Does the WNESU uh, have buildings and grounds uh, committee needs? No, right now we do not. Okay. I think then we will pass over that. And if it develops, then let's come back and uh, raise a committee. Uh, budget and finance. Um, who, who is our current uh, budget committee, Chris? I think the current budget committee, I mean. Well, if you're on the budget committee, um, raise your hand. Raise your voice, Mr. Chair. I think we have said that all members are uh, are able to be the budget committee, but I think we did have it down to like three people so that we didn't have quorum issues. And I was the chair the last time around. Um, and I've been on the committee. Deb has indeed been on the committee. Uh, I'm 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 trying to remember, Deb, who is with us uh, for some of those meetings. Um, let's see. Can you put your hands up? Uh, Priscilla was, I believe. I, I yep. acted as an alternate. I wasn't a, a formal oh. one, but I would be willing to be on it. Was was Jessa on the budget committee? No. I think it might. No, have been, I don't think so. May have no. been Carol. Would it may be? Have been, just would it be all right with the board if we simply reappoint the standing membership? <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or I'd like to be. I'd like to be on it, David. Oh, okay. I'll, all right. Um, we'll find out who's on it, and if I'm on it, you can have the vote, right. and I'll just look over your shoulder. And, and I and I would again always tell people that these are op that at least the way we have run it, and I'm not assuming that I'll be the chair at this time, but the way that we have run it is that these are open meetings of the board, which means that not only. Are, is um, is everyone allowed to come 
we really would encourage you to because uh, budgets drive policy in a way that they shouldn't, but they do. And if you want to have a sense as to how how the sausage is made, nothing like sitting in for uh, looking at uh, spreadsheets for uh, several weeks in a row to do that for you. So clarification. Hey. So David, am I on it or I'm not on it? <laughs> uh, Priscilla, you are on. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm making a, a note here that you are on budget and Chris and I will get together and, and check our committee assignments. Um, in the next day or so, I'm, I'm I'm looking at it now. I'm trying to I'm trying to call up all the the past ones, so I'll have that for you. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, yes, sir. Uh, I, I have just lost my vote. I, I would like to acknowledge that uh, that the uh, elected member uh, representative is here, and uh, her her vote is now her own. So uh, she can now disagree with everything I've done. So, well, it's very nice to see you here, um, Assistant Chair Charles. I hope your meeting in Westminster was successful, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about that when we get to director's comments. Um, uh, we have just settled our budget committee. Um, we are down to committee assignments, teacher and support staff uh, negotiations. Uh, Steve Fine uh, has been performing that task on behalf of the WNESU board. And Jack, uh, you are recognized. Mr. Chair, uh, uh, Cheryl Charles is your representative of this board. Uh, 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 Steve Fine is representing the, uh, the uh, high school board, just as a clarification. I believe that Deb Wright represents the high school board. Is that correct, Deb? Yes, that's my understanding. I'm sorry, Deb, I, 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 I misspoke, sorry. However, <laughs> both okay. Stephen and and Deb, I think. No, Stephen, we noted that it was WNESU. Deb. Okay, I, I think we've settled it. Uh, SIP team representative, Chris, and because we're talking here, um, in uh, acronyms again, would you please tell us what a SIP team is for the benefit of those of us who don't know what a SIP team is and what it does? Well, SIP is a continuous improvement plan, but the state, um, next year, um, the state says that we do not have to, we will not be having a SIP next year. What we will be having was will be the recovery plan, which is pretty much the exact same thing as a SIP plan, just <laughs> with, um, a different name. We still have to, in order to use the ESSER funds that we're getting, we have to have them, the, our initiatives reflected in the recovery slash continuous improvement plan. So um, this year to work pretty much the same. We're just calling it something different as the state wants us to. And um, you know, it'll be very similar to before. Um, I don't know if we need an individual person. I would say that with the recovery plan and the amount of grants tied to the recovery plan, I think it would be good to have the entire board involved or at least more than one person representing the SU board on the recovery team, seeing we are, um, we wanna make sure that we're covering everything that we need to cover with the ESSER grant money that we'll be using to make it happen. Chris, could we come back to the next SU meeting with a proposal on um, a committee, uh, what you would like to see? Yeah, that, I mean, it, the reason it's so vague right now is that we haven't met with the state yet as the um, as the school recovery team, which is the administrative team. Once we have that, I'll have more information for, for the board, but we're still getting more details from the state on a daily basis. So I think that would be appropriate. Thank you, Chris. So we're going to pass over uh, the um, continuous improvement uh, team rep because that may already be obsolete. And we'll be coming back to that um, as soon as we have more on it. So uh, Priscilla, you are recognized. Um, I, I'm sorry, David. I really need you to go back to the teacher and support staff negotiations um, and clarify that. Is Stephen, are you, is he going to be on, on the committee? Or do we need an alternate because he's sick? Or what do we um, need there? Well, St Stephen is- and What about Cheryl? Rep. Um, if an alternate, 
were um, needed, then I would appoint myself because I had performed that function prior to uh, his involvement. Because we talked about Cheryl too. Mm -hmm. Well, I heard that, but I believe that Cheryl is on um, as a uh, fifth member, as you will, for the purpose of um, being able to break a tie if necessary. Uh, Cheryl is an appointee of the um, uh, union district. And the reason for that, Priscilla, is it is highly probable that the union district will now once again become Athens and Grafton, one entity and Westminster as another. And that's the other reason we're doing it is to provide continuity so that um, that um, that contingency has been planned for. It's how we've operated, I think, for the last couple of years. You can correct me if I'm wrong on that, Cheryl, but I believe that uh, Cheryl's been uh, functioning on negotiations for several years now. And it seems to have worked out well. Any Thank you for clarifying. Thank you for asking. Okay, uh, audit committee. Um, Chris, what's the history on audit committee? Now that's, that's an interesting one because we initially created the audit committee to kind of assist and help, um, you know, all the work that I was doing around the, all the business office stuff that we're dealing with last year at this time. That's originally why it was created. And so it was separate than the audit that we have the lawyers come to and present to the board each year. So um, some boards have decided that, you know, to still have a member on the audit committee and other, you know, and, and some not, but initially it, it all depends what the board feels where we are in regards to the business office, but you still need to have a committee to, I mean, like I said, it was initially to, to make sure that we were checking into incidences that were taking place and reporting out to the board if there was anything that else that needed to be reported, but it was, it was created for the, um, all the many, many things that were going on in the business office. Okay, let's find out about that. Jack Breyer. Um, I'm going to defer to both Priscilla and Deb and, uh, and Jessa, who were the strongest proponents of this, but it was my recollection that it was more, it was, audit was certainly a function, but it was audit and administrative practices. And the idea was to provide some oversight of of processes on things ranging from, yes, uh, the finance office to things like the website, uh, to a, a variety of sort of oversight issues that, uh, uh, that somebody, it was felt needed to uh, examine. We had a, a rather spirited discussion about this in one of our large uh, open sessions, I believe it was in the high school gym about the need for it. Uh, but I don't want to speak too enthusiastically because the three that were most enthusiastic about it can speak for themselves. I'm going to uh, ask Deb if you want to comment on this, and I'm going to uh, recognize uh, Jessa. Okay. Um, yes, I think well, the audit committee was was begun for the same purpose as Jack was speaking about. However, the audit committee itself did not receive answers to questions that were asked. Um, towards the end, a lot of it drizzled, drizzled out, I guess I would have to say. But at this point, um, it's an audit committee um, because of the, all of the contentious stuff that happened over the last 2019 into 2020. I don't think the audit committee itself received any resolution um, to that. And, um, and perhaps a single meeting would be purposeful to get the answers to the questions that we had posed that were not answered some time ago. That's my take on it. Thank you, Deb. Jessa. I think we're talking about two committees, but I'm not 100% sure. I think we had a business practices audit committee. And then I think the actual audit committee might be one of those required things we have to accept the report of the actual auditors. If maybe Chris could clarify or David. I can't, Chris. Yeah, the, the committee that we're talking about right now was solely based on business office, as Deb alluded to. It had nothing to do with our our yearly audits that take place. Okay, thank you, uh, Priscilla. Okay. Yeah, at the high school meeting, we talked about the fact that 
you know, it would be nice to kind of get together and kind of oversee, you know, and wrap up and do that. Like Deb said, we said one or two meetings um, might just do it. We, you know, however, if we found something, you know, we can always do a little longer. Um, and we did elect um, representatives I know from the high school board and from the Rockingham board and from the high school and I'm on from the Rockingham board. Um, so I think it would be a good thing to go forward with it at this, this point, just to kind of look at what's maybe hasn't happened and maybe even we can lend some support for the business office if, you know, if some things maybe that we're seeing and that kind of thing would be helpful for them as well. I'm sensing that, um, oh, go ahead, George, sorry. I, yeah, I just wanted to clarify, uh, my notes here um, reflect that Rockingham, um, if there was an audit uh, committee or audit dealings that, that we would deal with it as a whole, we don't have any one person assigned to it is what I have in my notes. Now, my that, colleague, George, or, that was for just the board, our own board, but for the one to the WNHU, I was the, I was the rep. I, I have the sense that um, the, the audit committee feels that um, it, uh, its work is not complete until um, it has um, had the opportunity to meet again and make that decision. So um, we will research who the audit committee is and then ask the members if they can find a convenient time to meet and report back to the WNESU board. So uh, thank you for that discussion. Uh, policy committee. Um, Jack, do I recall correctly that you are chair of policy? I'm trying to remember if it was me or if it was Jessa, but uh, we, uh, we had appointed Jessa as our representative to, to the uh, policy committee. It is a, it's one of those joint committees of the board like negotiations. I don't know if Jess remembers being appointed, but I promise her she has been. I uh, do, yes. <laughs> I, I think I was this board's uh, uh, designee last time around, and we, uh, we, it's been a COVID casualty, and we need to get the afterburners on because we, as many of you know, we we lost a lot of the digital records, and so we've got about a three-year hole, and some of these policies have to be uh, have to be updated biannually, so we're already a year behind, so we really need to get rocking and rolling. Okay, I, I, I'm sorry, I interrupted someone. Who was that? Maybe I didn't. Um, we're gonna leave it with the Superintendent Pratt to uh, get his uh, policy committee uh, working as soon as practical. Is that all right with you, Chris? And um, we can certainly continue this discussion the next time we meet, we meet, because as Jack points out, we do have quite a bit of deferred maintenance in the pipeline. Um, I think that covers us through policy. Uh, item G is adopt Robert's rules of order. I'm gonna ask the board if it wants to uh, adopt Robert's rules or whether it wishes to adopt Robert's rules for small boards, which as a nine member board at this time, um, we have that option. Jack, I saw your hand up. Um, I can't speak to it, um, but because- You it, can speak to it, you just can't vote well, on it. Yeah, well, technically the, the, the membership is, is, is under 12, which makes it eligible. It's to, uh, on those nights where we have have more people, I would just say that if we do small boards, I would ask that the chair, when there are more than 12 people present, note that fact for the record and go back to regular Roberts rules, particularly if we have like 50 people show up in one of these sessions. Um, David? Yes, Deb. Um, the way I see it, it would be simpler to, to cut through the tape and simply go with Roberts rules of order without going to small boards to, like to cover it book either book way. I move that we adopt Robert's rule, the board adopt Robert's rules of order. I have a second, please. Second that. I have a second from uh, Jason Terry. Uh, discussion? Not hearing any, let me roll call us. Deb, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Jason. I think that was an aye. I, 
Uh, George? Aye. Priscilla? Aye. Uh, Lynn Morgan? Aye. Uh, Jessa West Clark? Aye. Cheryl Charles? Aye. Okay, thank you. We, we've adopted Robert's rules for uh, small boards. Uh, uh, this actually... Uh, no, the other way around. I I, I'm sorry, Robert's rules for boards. Robert's rules of order. The chair has misspoken. Thank you for uh, catching me on that. This does bring up another uh, consideration, um, which I wanna uh, point out, and I think that Jack will appreciate the irony in this. The WMESU bylaws state that this is a 15 member board uh, based on having had five constituent boards, which are now down to three. Uh, we had previously moved to um, suspend the rules to allow for a nine member board, but I'm gonna suggest that we may want to check with council and find out um, how exactly we should handle this. There's a certain irony here because if uh, Westminster decouples, <laughs> then uh, we would probably need to um, amend the bylaws um, a second time. So I'm just bringing this to people's attention because I think that um, if we're gonna act on it, that we have a responsibility to act on it as a warned agenda item. Okay, uh, is there just any- David? On that? Yes, Priscilla. David, um, actually what we just did is Robert's rules of order, the rules for small boards are within his rules. So you have actually um, approved his small ones for small boards when we have only nine members. It, it also allows us, and the reason I voted yes is because it also allows us if you do get above the, the 15 there or the 15 that we can use the regular ones. But that requires you to stand when you make a motion. It requires you to um, have the, the board chair must stand. If he's talking, he has to give up his seat if he wants to participate in the conversation and all kinds of, of tricky little nuances that have to go on. So because Robert's rules for small boards are part of that Robert's rules for order, we are covered because we can function that way when we have less than than the team. It's Deb, a little, just a little bit more informal. Thank you. Deb, it was your motion. Do, do you accept that um, explanation? Yes, I do. Okay, thank, thank you. you. We've covered that. Uh, new item for discussion and action is act on changes to superintendent's health insurance. I think we have an obligation to the public to at least uh, explain what's at issue here. And what's at issue here, and this will be uh, the topic of an executive session discussion, is this. Uh, current statute requires that all SU employees receive the same contribution to the health insurance. And when we, um, when we offered Chris a new contract, um, the contract was uh, to increase his salary from $125,000 $500 a year to $130,000 a year, all other terms and conditions to stay the same. Well, that put us in violation of statute because what statute did was uh, change the al allowable um, uh, participation uh, for employees from 15% to 20%. In other words, um, we were picking up 85% of uh, Chris's health insurance, but now under the law, we can only pick up 80% of it. And in practical terms, what that means is that um, Chris's, of Chris's $4,500 raise, he will be spending uh, $4,850 of that raise on his increased health premium. And uh, if you did the fast math, it means he's already $350 in the hole. And this will be what we will be discussing in the executive session. I want to get this out here uh, in the public arena because I think it's important that the public understands um, that um, this is the topic at hand. We would very much like to prevent the perception 
that uh, we will be uh, discussing this uh, out of uh, the public eye. We will have a discussion um, in executive session, but no action will be taken uh, short of any action which is taken in public. Okay, so that's the explanation on 6A. And uh, I will be sharing with the board uh, our uh, attorney, Pietro Lin's advice uh, when we get into executive session on this. So that's the story on that. Um, let me see here. We have uh, other items for discussion and action. Um, and uh, I asked Chris to send around a memo from Maggie Lenz, who is the lobbyist working on behalf of our Act 173 coalition. And I presume by this time, some of you have had the chance to read it and some of you haven't. And uh, to try to, uh, to hit the highlights here very briefly, three weeks ago, uh, Becky Ballant, who is the Wyndham County State Senator, who is also President Pro Tem, uh, declared any action on uh, changing the waiting formula was dead for this year. Um, that may have been a premature pronouncement because um, it was voted out of um, the Senate Ed Committee, a bill called S-13, uh, which was introduced by Phil Baruth. And it has been uh, voted on by the Senate and will receive a second reading tomorrow and in all likelihood pass over to the House for consideration. So that early prognostication on the part of the Senate President Pro Tem proved to be somewhat inaccurate. And this is hugely important for Wyndham Northeast because under the waiting formula, um, which was um, uh, adopted, but not currently, uh, um, in uh, use, um, we would be looking in, in, in Wyndham Northeast of a hit to the local taxpayer of somewhere between 900,000 and uh, a million one a year. And that's a big chunk of change um, cast uh, around our four towns. Um, and I, I want board members to clearly understand that there are politics involved here. And the politics are these. Uh, Phil Baruch's bill S-13 is a less than perfect vehicle because what it does um, is creates a task for us to study the weights. And I believe they're supposed to report back uh, in 2022. And this task force, um, uh, one of the potential members of the task force would be the Vermont Independent Schools Association, which is sort of an uh, interesting player in as much as very, very few independent schools are very much affected by uh, student weights to take into account such things as special education, uh, poverty, English as a second language, and several other categories. The purpose in getting S-13 crossed over to the House for consideration is the House arguably has a much better uh, bill, which was drafted by Laura Sibelia, who's an independent, represents uh, Dover and some of the other valley towns. And Phil Baruch's bill is a, a four-page uh, kick it down the highway to oblivion by studying it to death bill, whereas Laura Sibelia's 24 page bill is far more comprehensive. And we are hopeful that when it gets to the House, which seems highly probable at this point, that the House will um, act to create um, a piece of legislation which is a little bit more responsive to the needs of districts which are you know, facing severe challenges in terms of educating uh, all comers and paying for that education. And I'm sorry to rattle on at you here, but I'm gonna do it because I want it clearly understood that part of what uh, caused S-13 to um, make it out of the Senate Ed Committee and hopefully tomorrow make it out of the Senate to the House is because pressure has been brought to bear by um, a lot of school 
board members as well as individuals who have stepped up to the plate when they've been asked and written to their uh, senators asking them to act on it. Um, a um, motion of this board, um, which I have in front of me, but I'm not going to bother to read it to you, simply said that we endorse the goals of the committee. And um, I once again want to uh, ask board members to understand that they will from time to time re receive what are referred to as legislative alerts, which will ask you to write a letter to your senator, uh, or I should say actually email your senator or email your representative. And it's that grassroots action, which has got us to where we are now. And uh, we remain, this is the coalition, uh, remains hopeful and mildly optimistic that we will actually get a bill passed, um, uh, which would go into effect on July 1, 2021. But there's still a lot of heavy lifting ahead. And um, we as school board members need to help with that. So thank you for hearing me out. And it's important business because um, we need to step up for the benefit of our communities, which are already sorely pressed to meet the obligations of um, 21st century education. Okay, questions? Thank heavens, no. Jack, uh, right. you remember. Yeah, a um, couple things. Uh, first, the, this, uh, the effort that has been put forth on behalf of the, uh, the study coalition, and I'm using that term because I can't think of the new name, um, it needs to be financed. Right now it's being, it's been uh, given a private loan and that private loan needs to be paid back and the boards that, and the towns that are the beneficiary of that loan and of that lobbying effort uh, need to step up. So it would be my request and my expectation that this entity and the constituent boards that, that comprise it um, do some of that since uh, we're talking a million dollar hit annually to our taxpayers. It seems that if we kicked in, you know, Ten thousand dollars towards its maintenance. We paid more for for skates. I understand. Uh, so it would. I would like us to have that as an item for uh, upcoming agenda. Um, I also want to note for the record, my name is not on the uh, study uh, coalition because, candidly, I want somebody to, to threaten to sue if this doesn't go through and it would be inappropriate for uh, the coalition who's trying to play nice to have a member that wants to throw a bomb but I want you to know very much that I like to throw a bomb and if this doesn't get through I, uh, I fully prepare uh, prepared to at least ask our board to uh, to litigate because this is uh, this is a catastrophically irresponsible uh, current bill of uh, the current law. It violates Brigham on its face and somebody needs to do something. And I, while I'm trying to be a polite, politely listening as my colleagues on the coalition try to do this the adult way, um, we may, you know, the old saying about uh, if you, um, you, you negotiate more effectively if there's somebody in the room with a, with a weapon in the corner. The, uh, and I think uh, uh, I'm prepared to, to ask our board to uh, go to court if, uh, if this uh, is an unsuccessful venture. Thank you, Jack. Anyone else? Um, Chris, do we have any other old business for discussion or action? No, I do not. Okay. Um, well, uh, before we uh, set a date for the next meeting and go into executive session, uh, it would be appropriate to uh, uh, hear director's comments. Uh, Deb Wright, would you like to start us off tonight? Oh, okay. I was just looking at a list of things. Um, the only one I really um, have to want to speak on tonight is uh, I'm concerned that we're losing an opportunity for a teaching moment by paying for composting from all of our schools. 
I believe that we, we have an opportunity to teach children how to learn how to compost for the future and make that usable material for gardens and so on and so forth. You know me, I've gotten up on the, you know, the stump before about gardening at the public schools and stuff like that, a teaching moment. Composting is a teaching moment. Paying someone hundreds of dollars a year, actually winds up being a couple thousand dollars probably a year to compost when we can either take it to the recycling center ourselves for free or create a composter at each school so people can learn how to do that and children can learn how to compost because we're all being required to do so in the state of Vermont. Why we're paying somebody else is just is senseless to me. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Uh, Priscilla. I, I will come back to you, Priscilla. Uh, uh, Jessa West Clark. Yes, sorry. Um, I actually, yeah, Deb, I would like to make that uh, agenda item at a future meeting because I believe that pertains to all the schools in the SU, not individual schools. Yes, thank you, Jessa. Yeah, um, other than that, I have no comment. Um, Priscilla, if you're having a hard time with it freezing up, um, turn off your video, that might help. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna come back to Priscilla here in another uh, minute or so. George Smith? Uh, yeah, I got a couple, um, well, a few. First, I wanna correct my previous statement um, regarding the uh, audit committee. Priscilla is correct, the Rockingham board. Uh, did appoint her um, for the SU representative. Um, we, I think we want to have more clarity around committees and what the needs are because it seems kind of, um, you know, we'll get back to this, we'll get back to that. And then oftentimes the committees just kind of go by the wayside. I, I'd, I'd like to see those more solidified. And um, then following up on that, I'd like to see them meet regularly and uh, report back to their individual boards, um, you know, if we're saying this is important, then it's important and we should solidify it and, and, and do it. Um, uh, another thing, I, I, it was nice. I had an opportunity to actually see another board member in person today and um, that personal connection, though it wasn't lengthy by any means, um, it had value to me and um, I'm looking forward to finding a way to get back to in person because um, it was Molly. It was great to see you today, and um, Deb composting <laughs> teaching moment because I don't know how to do it. So uh, great comment. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, George. Uh, Molly, are you here? Okay, I don't think Molly's here. Jack, uh, just a couple uh, items. Um, I think the idea of having um, to, to George's point. Uh, written descriptions of what our committees do, what's expected of them in terms of work product uh, would be a really useful thing. It's been a long time since we've done that and I think it's time. I would also add to that, I think it's vital that we put together a master schedule. Uh, this would help for planning work would also help us uh, so that we don't get jammed into the last moment on terms of a budget. When, you, when budget's done in 45 days, what you do is essentially advocate the budget oversight function and fiscal oversight is top of, of the list of things that we do. And if we have a master schedule also in writing, uh, it will help everybody make sure that we're covering all the tasks we need to cover during the course of a year. So that's all I got. Thank you, Jack. Uh, Priscilla, are you back online? Yeah, it's more trouble of my being able to speak rather than, than the computer itself. But I do thank, thank you for the comment. It really was helpful. Um, yes. Again, today, the news said that at least 50% of the children across the country are full in-person instruction. That means that in, in my, my own grandchildren that are in both Florida and Tennessee, which are highly, much higher COVID situations than here, they have been in-person five days a week all year. I really think that 
the sooner we get our kids back in there and look at their mental health and help them out, the better off we are. We're at least at four days a week for all of them now. That That is helpful, but we really need to push to get them there the faster, the better, because we have very little school left this year. It's kind of been a year where, you know, the mental health is really a concern. hoping that we have a definite plan that gets them back in right away. Thanks. Thank you, Priscilla. Thank you. Uh, Lynn Morgan. I like the idea of looking toward the composting. I just watched a program on that or uh, online course and the woman was amazing. I learned things that I never knew about. And, uh, would be very beneficial to the kids. And she mentioned working with children at different schools. So I would very much like to see us get that going, get kids outside working in the dirt. We'd all like to work in the dirt. Yes. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Cheryl Charles. Well, I'm another uh, uh, advocate for the composting, so thanks to Deb for raising it in the first place, and let's see if we can have that actually happen. That's uh, outstanding. Uh, it is the case that I was late for this meeting because I was attending the select board meeting in Westminster, and uh, the uh, select board members did take action, unanimously voted to seek legal counsel to to request of the State Board of Education uh, to put on their agenda to address the issue of Westminster's request uh, to withdraw. So they did take action tonight to get their legal support to um, do it in the, in the, in the ways necessary uh, to address that. That's all from me right now. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, Jason Terry. Uh, thank you, David. Um, just wanted to say, uh, I've been here a year, um, I, I full circled a year on uh, the boards. Um, on uh, 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 silly of me, I've uh, also been on a high school board. And um, so I guess I can't get enough. Um, the one thing I would like to do is advocate for us to start meeting in person. And uh, Jack, you know, I still owe you that cup of coffee at some point. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm happy that the kids are in school, especially in the middle school. They finally came around since September. They finally went to four days. And I think it's uh, well overdue that they did that. And I also think we need to start going. Uh, I'm sorry, the middle school went four days. And I, I think we need to really look at five days like uh, yesterday. And, um, you know, as a parent, I'm a little disappointed in some of the actions at the high school and the inconsistencies I'm finding. Um, and uh, there will be more to follow on that. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Um, I've, two things. One is I've actually been taking some notes about topics for the next uh, supervisor union meeting. Uh, number one is discuss composting. Number two is to um, define um, the committees and what their charge is and what uh, flows right into that is uh, discussion about creating a master schedule. So I, I think that those are all, you know, very important points that were made tonight. And these certainly should be uh, items that we need to spend some uh, time paying attention to uh, this current uh, session, if you will. Uh, I do want to speak to the matter of um, the coalition, and I will admit to being um, the guy who's paid the lobbyist to show up and work on our behalf, but I want to say something here, and that is I'm not looking for reimbursement. I'm looking for a match, and um, very soon um, this board and a number of other boards will have the opportunity to make that match. And the match um, will be um, to uh, see if we can't get the um, revised waiting formula through the session this year. It's not uh, a done deal and it could take two years and it could mean that we will be involved in this for two years, but the harder we push, the more likely we are to um, uh, prevail and 
uh, certainly have a more favorable outcome than we would if we decided it was somebody else's responsibility to deal with. So thank you for that. And um, I'm going to suggest that uh, we should hold our next meeting on April 14, which is a Wednesday. Um, at that point, I think we will have an idea of when the select boards meet. Thank you for making that suggestion, George. And we can um, discuss um, those three uh, items which came up under director's comments. And um, it will also give us a chance to hear from uh, the uh, supervi supervisory union leadership as to um, how the uh, recent CDC guidelines are going to sugar off in terms of um, the rest of this year and also how um, uh, the ESSA grants will impact um, the uh, recovery efforts, which we're going to have to um, get involved in to get students back up to speed here. So I'm now going to look for uh, a motion to go into executive session for uh, two items. Um, one is to discuss uh, super- David, so yes. David, I'm interrupting you. I'm sorry. On the, the next meeting thing, is the 14th going to give us enough time? Because if we're discussing some of the things that we were going to be discussing, do we want to move it to the 7th? Uh, uh, so I'm going to say no. And the reason is that uh, uh, Jason Terry early in the meeting pointed out that if we are going to consider staffing levels in the WNESU, we have to take action before April 15th. And, can, and well, that's April why I 15th, said the 7th, which would give us more time to. Um, well, I'm not entirely certain that uh, administration, that would give administration enough time to get ready, Priscilla, which is why I'm advocating for the 14th. Um, and I think it's important that uh, when we meet on the 14th that um, we're able to respond to some of the uh, concerns that came up tonight and also give them enough time to tell us, you know, what our next steps are going to be in terms of, um, you know, helping kids learn. It's really uh, it's what we're here for. And I don't mean at all to slight you when I say that, Priscilla. Um, I'm just thinking we, we need the prep time. So, but thank you for asking. Okay, so I'm looking for uh, a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussion of uh, superintendent's contract and to hear legal advice uh, thereon, uh, inviting administration to attend as appropriate. And I'm also uh, looking to uh, hear a negotiations update. Can I have a motion, please? A motion from George. Do I have a second? Seconded. Okay, with a uh, second from uh, Deb Wright, uh, we'll roll call it. Deb, how do you vote? Aye. Okay. Uh, George? Aye. Uh, Jason? Aye. Priscilla? Aye. Lynn? Aye. Uh, Jessa? Uh, I'll come back to you, Jessa. Uh, Cheryl. Aye. Uh, let's see who else have we got here. Well, that covers the waterfront, apparently. All right. Um, we are uh, in executive session.